Good afternoon. We're going to get started because I know there's everyone has this other meeting that a lot of people are planning to go to. So, welcome. As you all know me, my name is Lisette, and I'm super excited to be here with you all. Um, this is one of our initiatives, the branding and marketing. Uh, most of you were present in the uh, focus group we did for this project, so I'm really excited to see this, you know, materialize and kind of how we use your feedback to get this together. Uh, most of you have been men met Ben Walter at this point, so I won't leave it with you know further ado, but um, if you have any feedback for me after the meeting, you know how to reach out to me. If you don't, please reach out to somebody. I'm pretty sure someone will talk to <laughs> <laughs> um, So really welcome. Thank you for everything. Thank you for having us in your community, and let's get this started. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. How's everybody doing? Good. Well, I'm going to do my best to get through this quick. I'm shooting to... to wrap up and, and get you out of here about 6.45. So just want to set those expectations. Um, I've got a lot to share with you tonight. Um, I always like to give a little disclaimer. Uh, literally, there is no one in this community that has seen what I'm getting ready to show. Um, so for those of you that are in any way in charge, I am sorry if you are nervous right now. Um, but I, I really, we've been doing this for almost 20 years, and I think one of the things that we feel like is really important is to truly be able to share these reflections and comments back with the community together. And so I'm thrilled to have this many people come out to hear um, what we found and what we'd like to, to suggest with you today. And as Lizette said, um, we're open. We, we want to hear your feedback. We want to hear your comments. Um, we are recording the presentation tonight. We'll make that link available tomorrow morning. So you can go back, you can take a look at it, you can refresh yourself. And then any refinements or ideas that you have, things that Obviously, we didn't hit everything. There's too much to, to talk about. There's too much to cover, but I do think we've done a pretty good job. So I want to jump right in. Um, the first thing that we did here is, we, obviously, you can come into a community and you can have face, uh, focus group meetings and you can ask a lot of questions, but people don't always show up. So we launched an a online survey, and we had over 250 people that participated in the survey. It was a relatively robust survey. On average, uh, people spent four minutes on it, which for a survey is actually really good. Um, the responses ranged from remarkably optimistic to not quite as optimistic. <laughs> I think that you can all kind of imagine that range that we typically see. There, there are a couple things that I wanted to point out that I thought were interesting. Um, we asked people about what words you would use to describe. It was amazing how often words like small town, historic, and overall friendly. Um, came over and over and over again. It was so funny. I was actually working in Rochester, Michigan two weeks ago, and uh, one of the, the folks I was working with said, so where are you working in Michigan next? And I was actually, I said, I'm going to Manistee in two weeks. And they were like, oh, we love Manistee. <laughs> so um, the external thought of, of Manistee was very, it kind of amplified this. Warm, wonderful, beautiful place. Um, but this one, question six, was also very interesting. It asked the question of how positive of an image do you think people outside this region have of Manistee? And I know it's kind of hard to decipher. Um, neutral, somewhat negative, negative, versus somewhat positive and very positive. So literally you have a third of the people that think that outside perception of Manistee is negative. That's a little interesting. Now, when we talk about the, the process of community branding, I think I often describe myself as a community therapist. Um, we're dealing a lot with community self-esteem. And communities have remarkable personalities. They really operate as organic entities. And when, when you have a community that has a seasonal nature, you have a community that has newcomers versus old timers. You have a community with affluence versus a community that struggles. A community of retirees that combines with a, a kind of waning industrial base. All those things factor in to the dynamics that create your personality and create your community self-esteem. And I think one of the biggest things that we really felt was this community needed to, an opportunity to see itself through outsiders. Because even though the locals thought a third of the people didn't think very well, you are hard pressed to go outside of this region and not have people gush when you say the state of the name Manistee. 
So it's kind of an interesting dynamic there. This next question, if you're designing a postcard, what would you put on there? Guess what? The lake, the river, and the lighthouse. You know? <laughs> Surprise? No, not at all. So those are things that I think are really interesting for us to factor in. Lighthouses are really interesting icons. People are drawn to them. I've got five kids. They're drawn to things like that, like mud puddles and lighthouses, right? <laughs> like you can't go past one without seeing one. But the thing that's interesting about a lighthouse is it's really difficult to incorporate a lighthouse and not have your entire personality go coastal. You have to be real sensitive about your color selection. You have to be real sensitive about composition so that you can truly capture the personality that you want to share. So we wanted to pay tribute to those thoughts of the locals there. Um, this was, again, I don't expect you to be able to read from this, but we asked what are some of the specific places that you would show off on a tour? Look at how big this list is. There were so many things that people commented on as, as wanting people to see the Riverwalk and, and the theaters and, you know, all these different things going very, very well. And it's really interesting because you had people that spelled things wrong and they were still really big names. So you could tell that it was something that people were interested in. Now, this question simply says, do you think that the, the identity of this community is clearly illustrated? One-third said it was, two-thirds said it wasn't. I can pretty much guarantee you that the one-third that said it was are also the one-third that believes that Victorian Port City is the best phrase that has ever come from, right? So we, we have to be very mindful of all those connections that people have with those different messages. So... From there, we kind of look at some of the current image. Now, I will tell you, I was telling somebody before the meeting started, you have a dynamic here in Manistee that I have never seen in my professional career. And it's an interesting dynamic. This is all, everybody's familiar with this, city logo, see it on the water tower, see it all over the place. You have a county, a township, and a city that not only do they share the name, but they literally share the exact same logo. You don't see that very often. Um, by often, I mean ever. Um, you know, typically where I come from in South Carolina, counties and cities hate each other. So the last thing they want to do is look like each other. So, you know, when you dig a little bit deeper, though, you even find derivations of the exact same logo and all this different stuff. Now, look. I want to be very, very deliberate about this. It's not a bad thing that these organizations were willing to work together, that these organizations were willing to put their own individuality aside to be able to be part of a bigger system. All those things are good, but the problem then happens, what happens when the image that we all adopted becomes outdated? What happens when that image no longer appropriately illustrates who's in charge of what so that I know who to give credit to or who to complain to, right? All those things are part of that overall system. So we want to look at creating some identities that create a little bit of separation, understanding that working together is still our end goal. We just don't want to look every, make everybody look exactly alike, you know? It's the difference between having a family portrait where literally every person wears a white shirt and white pants. Some of you probably have that portrait, you know? I get it. I understand that. But we want to be able to preserve the individuality while clearly showing that we're working together. So then this just kind of expands out and really starts to look at the overall community and some of those major identities. Now, there's, there's some interesting things going on. Um, the chamber has got a really great system in play where they created kind of a primary organizational logo and then they created a series of expansions from that. Very, very well done there. Um, the CBB is doing some really, really great things as well. When you have to market a county, you have to be, you have to be very diplomatic. I'm just going to call it like it is. You know, when you market a county, it's different than marketing a city. You know, you can't just play favorites. You have to be diplomatic to all the, the communities that make that county up. I come from Greenville, South Carolina, in Greenville County. So I know every time Greenville talks about Greenville, 
all the other municipalities that are not Greenville feel like redheaded stepchildren. So there's a very, very interesting dynamic that you have to be sensitive to. We actually leaned on this pre-existing system. We understand that the CBD is truly doing the heavy lifting when it comes to the storytelling for this region. They're the ones that have the resources and access to go out and try to tell the external story. But the thing that we want to be able to focus in on is we need to tell the story to ourselves. We need to remind our friends and neighbors why where we live is special. We don't put enough attention on that. And that's where our city government, our DDA, and some of those local organizations, they're really the ones that communicate to the local. And does anybody in the audience have a classic car? Okay, we got one. I, I've got a 67 Mustang. And it was my first car. I got it when I was 13 and had to rebuild it from scratch. And if you've ever studied the economics of a classic car, it is actually the definition of insanity. <laughs> like, why in the world would something that is worth so little take so much money and effort constantly? Right? Like, you, it's, it's kind of like owning a boat, right? So when you own a classic car, you take those cars to cruise ends because you need other people to tell you how beautiful that car is. Because without that external validation, it is just sheer insanity to put that effort and resource into it. Our downtowns are just like a classic car. It takes constant investment, constant stewardship, and as locals, we need to be reminded of why our community is special. And that's exactly what these recommendations are intended to. So not intended to duplicate these efforts, but actually to be in addition to that and help these organizations that are providing services do a better job of connecting those dots. So what I typically do is I go through and I, I simplify it down to these elements, and I always like to start with color. Now, my wife is a designer. And I learned about three years ago that there are a lot of different shades of white. <laughs> Had no clue that existed. We were in the middle of a heated argument about four shades of white until I just stopped and said, I have to be honest, I don't actually care because it's white, right? Um, but deciding on these colors, I think, is really, really important. We knew that there was this word Victorian going around. If you've ever looked at Victorian palettes, they can be... Uh, a little bit drab, depending on what time period of the Victorian era you're looking at. Any time a community has water, they automatically want blue in it, right? You know, any time you have a sun, you want orange, right? Um, any time you have trees, you need green. So we wanted to have a good, well-thought-out palette that wasn't too beachy, wasn't too coastal, wasn't too Victorian, but was appropriate in all of those. So... I, and don't ever judge off of a, a projector. It's the worst way. But believe me when I put this up here, the palette's beautiful. It's fan, no, I'm just kidding. It's seven colors, okay? Um, really with four being our main colors, and you'll see them kind of materialize. So then from there, after we landed on these colors, we know that we want to use this color for continuity and connecting all of the different messages that we have. Then we start looking at typefaces. Now, with the typeface, again, as I said, we leaned off what CBB had already done with the typeface that I believe was called Azo, and um, it's this sans serif typeface. And then we brought in a hand script as an accent typeface that we use in our tagline, so that when we have this kind of personal message that we're sharing, we're able to kind of put that personal touch. Now, let me tell you what's so great about this, because I'm a design nerd. Uh, this typeface has all these different widths to it. So you can actually achieve a lot of different looks depending on what it is you're trying to do. You can go thicker if you want to be bolder. You can go thinner if you want to be a little more subtle, a little more contemporary. But a lot of times people see this typeface and they're like, ah, that just seems so sterile. It seems so cold. Well, sans serif typefaces were designed on purpose to be content neutral. They were designed for you to be able to infuse your own meaning into. And when you have a community that has a lot of different stories, you need to make sure that you preserve that versatility. Now, what mistake do a lot of communities make? They hear that theme, Victorian, and then they decide they need to go pick a Victorian typeface. And then from there, you literally have carved away 
a very easy 70% of your potential audience because there's so much character built in to a particular look and feel. So preserving as many of your options of storytelling is really, really important for us. Now, something else that we wanted to do is we wanted to simply have a treatment to the name Manistee so that that was visually consistent throughout the board. So in that primary typeface, now if you're a former English teacher or current English teacher, I know that it's a proper noun. I know that it's supposed to be capitalized. Um, but sometimes it just makes sense. And there's a certain rhythm with the way that your name is. I wanted to have something that just felt very casual and approachable. And, and I just really liked how the name looked. So after you look at your colors, after you look at your typeface, you really want to dig into that message. And with that, what we do is we create what we call a brand statement. So I'm going to read that for you now. For hundreds of years, people have been drawn to this stunning place where the forest and the waters converge. This place that we call home. From the Ottawa to the early Jesuits, the richness of our nature provided an ample life. Then came sawmills and schooners that drove our vibrant economy and built our Victorian downtown. And below our feet, we discovered salt, which fueled another industry, local business, and a unique flavor. This city on the water, Manistee, has always been connected to the beauty that surrounds it. Manistee is again experiencing renaissance. Our beautiful historic buildings are being restored. The lights of the Vogue shine bright. The halls of the Ramsdale are rich with art. New businesses are joining our community and our streets are becoming vibrant. Manistee is focused on health and dedicated to education. We believe that our community is the kind of place that you should be able to live from the cradle to the career. We believe that the power of this place will drive the innovation of our future. We are Manistee, and we are proud of our home. The river drives us. The forest beckons us. The history connects us. The beauty keeps us. We are Manistee, soul of the water, spirit of the woods. So, I will take claps all night long. Um, so, so what you really see there is you, you see those comments of what we heard people talk about through those input meetings and through the survey, those elements that they were proud of and excited about, going back to that, um, to the meaning of the word, and in typical Manistee fashion, they can't agree on what the meaning is, right? There's even an argument there where it's like, well, we think it means islands at the mouth of the river. But, you know, so this idea of the spirit of the woods and so much of your community is just intimately connected with this water. So I, I just, I felt like those were the things that you all are so proud of and so connected to and, and so graciously share with others, even if you don't want to all the time. Um, so from an icon standpoint, um, we went through, we did a couple things very, very deliberately here. Again, we had this base of a dark, rich green, which you do not expect to see in a coastal composition. We added directly with it those deciduous trees. Is that right? Deciduous evergreen trees. I'm going to go with evergreen trees. Are they the same thing? No. Uh, okay, good. Then they're evergreen trees. Um, but, you know, everything about it, from, from the walkway out to the lighthouse, the direct connection where, you know, you are so much more than just the water, and that composition that kind of leads you forward as you follow the lighthouse into the, the pathway and into the trees, even having this simplified version for social media of just kind of zoom in, giving yourself a horizontal and vertical um, making sure that it works in one color, even though it is a little complex, it still works well in that composition. But again, so this idea, and, and I want to be very clear, this idea of soul of the water, spirit of the woods, 
That's not a replacement to anything that exists. That's a new tool, okay? That is this, that's this rallying cry. This is the thing that reminds us why we love calling this place home. But what I have for you is I actually have four different strategies that I want to suggest. So soul of the water, spirit of the woods, that is our local pride. That is our city marketing. That is telling this history, this native origin story. We all that lands in that simple message. The second part, Manistee, how Michigan says outdoors. Lake Manistee, Manistee River, Manistee National Forest, Manistee Path. I mean, there, there are so many things called Manistee. <laughs> you know, being able to take advantage of that and truly make your name synonymous with quality outdoor recreation, which fits in perfectly with the things that the CBD is doing. That is absolutely the, the value set, the story that they're telling. The third, Manistee Spirit of Success. This is our targeted economic development push, our business recruitment, our revitalization, and our reinvestment campaign. And then finally, the preservation of Lake Michigan's Victorian Port City. This is a historic moniker, folks. This is something that you have used long enough that you can comfortably let everybody know. It's okay that you had it tattooed on your back in 1984. <laughs> it's not going to go away. But the problem is it can't be your only story. It's one of the things that we all too often do. We, we end up adopting these things and feeling like, oh, well, we've adopted this thing. You're not a theme park, you're a community. People live here, right? Now, you've got some amazing things. Your Christmas event perfectly captures everything that is fantastic about that time period. So this is something that's preserved as part of the system, but we are adding the tools in play to be able to go through and do the things that we want to do and accomplish the goals that we have. I always think about these branding systems like toolboxes. Just because you decide you need a hammer doesn't mean the screwdriver was broken. It just means you shouldn't be hitting that with a screwdriver, right? So now we're starting to build that toolbox out. Now where it starts to get fun, though, is when we start to look at the extension, where it starts to go more places. So I understand. I know exactly how this will go. You put that logo out, and the first call that I will get is... I took the logo to an embroiderer, and they say it's too complicated, right? Which is true. So being able to have a clean, simplified version where you kind of take the same word type and literally just go through and add this subtle little gesture to the dot of the O of the beacon of the lighthouse. Now, I designed this before I ever knew that there was a city flag. And the city flag is really, really cool, so it kind of harkens back to that. But then being able to take this system and extend it out to elements and, and attributes and assets that a community has like this marina. Our downtown, this is the current downtown Manistee logo. Again, super big props. Downtown was using a system that coordinated with the county, coordinated with the city level. So they were doing the right thing tactically. But how do we move this forward? This absolutely can be a place where you preserve that Victorian port city. You can have something a little bit more historic, have your vintage light pole. But you don't have to only be that downtown. Downtown can be more than one thing. If you, if you go and you talk to a, a brand new business owner, this might not be the reason that they're investing in downtown. So let's also give it something clean and fresh, this icon that represents the letter M that can really represent not just downtown, Maxwell Town as well. Unbelievable story of a neighborhood-based district that served industrial workers and still thrives today as kind of a, I mean, it literally is a gem hidden in the neighborhood. It is fantastic. So you see I'm playing around with a couple different things where I have a downtown logo, I have a logo for all of historic Manistee, and then a, a historic Maxwell Town variation, and then taking the same design concepts and rolling them over into that entity that is the steward of the district with the DDA. So now the things start to connect a little. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So then with this, I really I didn't want to touch too much with CBB because I think they're doing such a great job. 
but knowing that they brought visit to the forefront, I just wanted to show how there are all kinds of things they can do moving forward. Take that word visit and build in the adaptations of biking and hiking and boating, bringing in a series of icons. They have been able to keep their message and their look so clean that they preserve that versatility. So the ability to get out and really make it work for them, I think, goes a long way. Um, and then just kind of showing what you could do when you start to tell that story and stitch together all those assets that you have. And then we come around the bend and we start talking about things like brand marketing. Making the, the design make its way into materials. Um, had to give that a new business card, right? You know, uh, it is amazing how those subtle gestures. Now, I want to be very deliberate here because anytime you present something that has to do with the government, like the first thing that people are like, oh, I don't want to waste money. I don't want to waste money either. So the great thing about brand rollout is oftentimes it's directly tied to the things that organizations are already doing. You don't have to throw away perfectly good business cards. It's not how it works. This is not a corporation. We don't have that kind of power, nor do we have that kind of luxury. You know? But as you need new things, you just start to rolling adopt that, that new set. Now, you do kind of want to make the commitment that you're going to keep it for long enough that the rollout strategy will create a co cohesive uh, message eventually, but you know, new vehicles, let's say. You don't have to go back and change the graphics on old vehicles necessarily, but anything new that you do, instead of getting what it would have looked like, you just apply new graphics package to it. Um, take advantage of the way that people refer to themselves. I love it when communities have their own little like way that they refer to themselves. You know, I'm from Greenville, and everybody called it G Vegas. I <laughs> know, it's lame, but like, it, it's, it's one of those things that you do. And, and being able to kind of take that. Now, oftentimes, you might have a, a nickname like this that might teeter on the side of positive or negative. Making sure that you take it and put it into a way where you might not ever market with this, but you make these tools available to the community, to the business community, so that they can create merchandise that people might be able to create and create ways for people to show off the tie that they have with the community. I was mentioning the flag. This is a, a stunning design when it comes to flag design. It is rare that you get a city flag that is so well thought out and like reservedly simple. Um, if anybody has seen, there's a fantastic TED talk on city flags that shows how most of the, excuse me, most of them are referred to as SOBs, which stands for seals on bed sheets. Um, but, you know, the, the greatest rule of thumb is a good flag should be able to be drawn by a five-year-old after they study it for 30 seconds. And that's a simplicity that we don't often see in design. So I was thrilled to see this. I love the idea that this, even though it's not in your color system, that's fine. A flag is its own thing. You know, it is the, it is the banner that we rally behind. So being able to have it make its way into merchandise, that makes all the sense in the world. Um, look, there's this weird thing that happens with, with communities and apparel. Most of the time, if you own anything, it is what we call a car wash t-shirt. The shirt that is so ugly that you will only wear it to cut grass or paint, right? Has 7,000 logos on the back, and you were supposed to be so unbelievably grateful that someone gave it to you for free. Um, being able to make this brand available to the business community allowed them to profit. There is nothing wrong with businesses profiting off of a community's pride for itself. In fact, I encourage it. It's a great thing to have happen. There's this weird dynamic where we automatically assume with the creation of a brand, uh, brand system, you need brand control. Well, guess what? It doesn't work that way. Not in a community. That's not how, like, what are you going to sue somebody for? Is another community going to change their name to Manistee so that they can? No, it's not going to work that way. So remove those barriers to entry, make the resources available so that the customers can connect with the brand. Um, I remember, I, I actually just want you all to know how special you all are. 
Today is my oldest daughter's 16th birthday. So I know I, I missed going to the DMV, I mean the Secretary of State office, with her to get the driver's license. Not sure whether, I think you all did me a favor. Um, but I remember she was about 13 and she, she said, hey, I really want a swell bottle. But she asked it in a way like, will you buy me a car? <laughs> and when I went to the store and figured out that this bottle was $55, I, was, I now understood the tone, you know? And, and the thing that I realized is they actually bottle up fairies into these little cans to keep your drinks cold. Um, but the reason that I always put something like this up is there's a very, very important concept called brand co op Oftentimes, when we create logoed merchandise, our mindset is... This is not going to have a premium value. So we need to find the lowest cost product for us to apply our brand to. Brand co-oping is the exact opposite of that. Take established brands that fit into the personality of the community that you have, and then apply your brand to that brand. If you want to position yourself as outdoor recreation, then you put some Manistee logos on Patagonia vests. If you want to do something with boating or, you know, you get some Manistee Yeti coolers and stuff starts to happen, right? Um, so being able to really take this idea of brand co-oping, taking your message and kind of funneling some of the pre-understood value of certain identities and contributing it that back to your community. Somebody said earlier that they didn't recognize me because I didn't have my hat on. Um, if you met me at all, I probably did have my baseball cap on. It is my signature, I guess. So I always design a baseball hat. Um, but you can see, like, being able to have that simple icon. Now, you notice, when I put this stuff on there, it doesn't say Manistee. Now, it might not roll out that way, right? Obviously, people don't know what the graphic means now. But the goal is for the implementation to be robust enough that you are comfortable using that icon to represent your place. But you have to earn it. You have to earn it through implementation. Show how that brand might make its way into comprehensive wayfinding. Now, I want to be very deliberate here. The community has invested in wayfinding. There are wayfinding signs that are already in play. As I said before, you don't pull down one sign to put up another sign. You fill in those gaps. You make sure your entry corridors are ready. You make sure that the connective corridors where people are going, where you want them to go, are well signed in a seamless, continuous fashion. And I guarantee you, by the time you handle that, any of the pre-existing wayfinding that you have will probably be towards the end of its life. Believe it or not, a sign is not intended to be finest. So being able to go through and update those in a nice sequential way. Being able to go through and carry this through branded banners, I'll tell you what, the 150 banners that you have up are fantastic. They've got great stories. They make you want to stop and actually engage the banner. I love that. Um, what I did here was actually created the exact same design in three different color systems so that you can actually use color to help people understand different components. So entry corridors, your corridor out to the beach, and the downtown core as well. Um, using that color coordination to help people understand what they're seeing. And then we even created a, an advertising mock-up where it gives us this opportunity to show off imagery, introduces this kind of, you know, varying message from a headline stand, a standpoint, anything from built on water, now showing, historically connected, and illuminated. So, I was able to get through that pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Now it's your turn. I mean, obviously, hopefully it feels a little bit like drinking out of a fire hose. But um, I hope you also can see that based off everything that we're looking at and everything that we've shared, I really like your community. I think Manistee is a fantastic place. I think the passion that we have come across in this community is second to none. And we really hope that a system like this might help to connect those dots and leverage the effort that so many are making throughout the community. With, yes, sir? So in your experience, 
what kind of an uh, budget would the city need to have as far as the first year implementation? So the great thing, and I'll tell you, people always ask that question. And it's a hard, it's a really hard answer because literally every community is different. Um, I will tell you this. The rollout strategy is one that is based off of the clear identification of low-hanging fruit and easy successes. It is amazing how much can be done on very, very low cost. The simple digital adoption, implementation of the system into the, the city system, adoption of the departments, rollout into digital platforms, rollout into social media, that might need some assistance, but again, it's not a giant ticket. And then if you're phasing things, don't jump straight to wayfinding. That's the most expensive. You know, do simple, cost-effective things. The street banners can be very low cost with very high visual impact. What we'll be doing is we'll be sharing with the community a comprehensive checklist of all the components that they need to consider for a good, robust rollout. Allowing them to consider their own budget and what is a low-hanging fruit in their community. Um, the saddest thing, and I'll tell you, a community's mindset is they always try to tackle a big, hard project first and skip the easy stuff. It's amazing how many times a community goes through this they're super excited. They decide they want to update a gateway sign for a super big budget. And then six months later, they still have to change their Facebook profile. You know, so being able to go through, figure out the ways that you can implement the, the things the quickest. Second tool that I'm going to share with them is what we've developed called Grand Score. And it actually allows the community to self-score their own implementation. And based off of the, the points that we attribute to each one of the categories, it helps them to prioritize what the next things on their list are. So they can go through, identify what's the lowest cost for the highest point value, and that helps them to prioritize what to do. Kind of a diplomatic answer. But we're going we're to try to give all the steps. Yes, ma'am. I can tell you, I, I've got 30 years behind me in this town, and all of them are going to be story is one city banner. And it, you've really done a great job. Thank you. You've really done a great job. You know, sometimes when you live here a long time, you kind of get into that rut that this is what we are. And um, there's not an appreciation for what we have. And when newcomers come to town and visitors come to town, they are amazing. Right. You know, we have a family that was here last year from California. Second time here, and just walking them through town, walking them along the river, being at the beach, your jaws are on the ground, and and we forget that we lose that once sometimes when we've been here too long. Yeah. Nice to see how you captured it as an outsider stepping in when you see it. I really think you did a great job. Well, thank you, and and I do I want to throw something in on that comment too because. I think that, I, I agree with everything that you're saying, but I also think that there's a very interesting dynamic in a community like this, where it's great to get that positive affirmation from the visitor, but we also have to be very, very mindful to grow our economy holistically, so that we're not saying that our solution is to bring in more summer visitors. That is what drives that wedge even deeper. So being able to take that positive feedback and convert it into the, the capital that we need to truly grow our own economy. And I, I will tell you, when you sit there and you look at the numbers, and people in my business are unbelievably guilty of talking about millennials like they're aliens. <laughs> really not that hard to understand the things that motivate and by the way, Generation Z has already started graduating from college and has jobs. So we've got to quit acting like this some sort of Rosetta Stone to be able to communicate to millennials. But the fact of the matter is, industrial recruitment of the 1950s does not work in 2019. So when a community has to think about how they grow their economy, they can decide to grow their economy 
through the more traditional ways that are going to recruit a more traditional workforce, or they can choose to focus on things like access to recreation, enhancement to quality of life, investment in education, enhancement of health care, so that you become the kind of place that people want to live, and I guarantee you they will figure out a way to make a living. That's, it's a different kind of economic development these days. So you have all the ingredients, and to be honest, I would actually say that's part of the thing that makes some of the, is it fair to say that Manistee has a little sass to it? A little bit of sass, a little bit of spunk, fire, acid sometimes, right? Yeah. Um, and, and the thing is, it's like it completely and totally makes sense. You sit there and you look at all the ingredients. You look at all the people that flood into the community during the summer and talk about how they, they love it. And then they struggle all the way through the winter. They struggle finding a job. They struggle being able to make ends meet. And it just feels like they're not living in the vacation of others. So I completely understand where that friction comes. And being able to take the one story and help it to drive the bigger story, is, that's the whole goal of what we're looking for. Thank you so much. Um, we're running at like 642. Maybe one or two more questions, and then I'll get you out of here. Yes, sir? I like the connectivity. I think mean, there's a pattern. Great, great. Thank you. Anything else? I just want to say one thing. About yes, sir. The tankers coming up the, up the river is something yes. that's special and unique. Right. I mean, that could be been in here somewhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great point. Yeah. That's a great point. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know me, and I love NFTs, but you really captured, I think, I mean, you made me cry. I was like, you're not, I was like, you captured it. It is great. Thank you. Well, and, and it really, I mean, there's no doubt when you come here, you, you do feel like you're in a special place. And um, we just have to, there's been so much work that has gone into all these projects that the community's working on, all these studies that you've been through, all the endless meetings that you sat through. I really, really hope that what you're starting to see is you're starting to see the actual tools to tell the story, connect the dots, and move the community to the direction that you all want to see it go. So I want to thank you all so much. For those of you that need to sneak out, please feel free. Anybody got questions for me? I'll be around so you can come to ask me. Thank you so much. Thank you.